Emmert International proudly presents the Rigging Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. A new hospital was being built in the state of Washington. Ingress and egress to the southwest side of the hospital was restricted by a large wooded ravine. Therefore, the installation of a bridge was required. The proposed bridge would span over the canyon 216 feet. The general contractor in charge of the project needed a cost-effective method to construct the bridge and place it over the canyon. The managers within the general contractor's regional office were familiar with Emmert International's history and knew that Emmert could provide new and innovative solutions to the bridge placement. As a result, engineers from Emmert met with the customer's project team and began to address the bridge placement. First, the general contractor wanted to devise a plan that would place the bridge girders onto pre-constructed pier pads and at the same time minimize project cost. A local fabrication company was utilized to build the four main steel bridge girders that would serve as the base for the bridge. The girders were 216 feet long by 9 feet tall and weighed 129,000 pounds each. At Emmert's suggestion, permanent cross bracing was pre-installed at the fabrication shop so that two of the bridge girders would be connected to each other. This allowed Emmert to transport two bridge girders at one time, which in turn reduced the number of moves from four to two. Emmert also demonstrated to the client that the girders would require additional temporary lateral bracing to ensure a safe cantilevered launch. To transport two bridge girders at one time, four Emmert International manufactured hydraulic transport dollies were configured under the rear portion of the girder. To mitigate the overall height of the transport system, two underslung walking beams were positioned on each side of the load. The underslung beams were used to lower the overall height of the support beam and minimize the impact to overhead obstructions. This same combination of dollies and walking beams were also used in the front portion of the bridge girder. After installing the transport system, the bridge girders were transported at night to the new construction site. Upon arriving at the site, the two girder assemblies would be bolted end-to-end -to, -end to form a 432-foot-long continuous double girder. The rear girder section acted as a counterweight and allowed Emmert to position transportation equipment just in front of the connection point and at the rear of the girders. This configuration would allow Emmert to transport the entire structure and cantilever the first section over the canyon. To accomplish the connection process, Emmert aligned the first set of girders and blocked the structure out on staging cans. The second girder section was then positioned behind the first bridge girder section and also blocked out on staging cans. Since the girders were pre-cambered over 18 inches in the center of the span, a laser level was utilized to ensure that the staging support points were at the correct elevation so both bridge sections were aligned properly and kept level over the entire length. A false work deck was also pre-installed by the bridge contractor at this point, minimizing the need to build this over the ravine. In addition, rigging was pre-attached to the end of the girder that would be moved over the ravine. This would simplify the rigging process when the end of the girder was in range of the crane located on the far side of the ravine. Unfortunately, the approach to the canyon was not a straight pathway. As a result, the launching process would require Emmer to steer the entire structure as it was launched over the canyon. Further complicating the process were clearance restrictions imposed by residential fences and trees within the canyon. The angle of movement was carefully planned to ensure that these obstructions were cleared during the launching process. Since the structure was so long, radio communication was also required to communicate between the spotters watching the end of the girder and the equipment operators. A 10-line Goldhofer platform trailer was then placed at mid-span of the 432-foot girder, just in front of the middle connection point. The trailer was rigged to a winch truck and would be pulled by winch lines running from the bridge abutment foundation. Four 70-ton Emmert hydraulic dollies were placed at the end of the girder as well. At this point, the hydraulic platform trailer and the hydraulic jacks within the Emmert dollies were elevated until the weight of the entire girder was lifted. The staging cans were removed and the launching process was ready to begin. 
The winch truck began pulling the girder toward the canyon as Emmert personnel maneuvered the platform trailer and the dollies on the proper course. As the girder moved into the canyon, a close eye was kept on the end of the structure as it neared a residential fence. Additional staging cans were placed near the edge of the ravine as the midsection of the bridge girder approached the edge of the canyon. After the front of the Goldhofer reached the canyon wall, the hydraulics within the platform trailer and the transport dollies were used to lower the girder onto staging stands. The girder had spanned over the ravine to a point far enough that a crane could be rigged to the end of the girder. While rigging the crane to the girder, the platform trailer was moved past the connection point toward the rear of the girder while the transport dollies remained in the same position. The transport system was again elevated and the girder was moved further into the canyon. Under the direction of Emmert, the crane at the far end of the canyon continued to support the south end of the girder as the launch process continued. Two concrete bridge piers had been constructed ahead of time and would serve as the foundation support for the 216-foot girders. As the girder moved over the canyon, the connection point aligned with the foundation support. At this point, the girder was again placed onto staging cans. A second crane was positioned on the north side of the canyon and was rigged to the end of the first girder section, just ahead of the connection point. It was now time to separate the two girders. After crews carefully detached the first set of girders from the second set of girders with cutting equipment, both cranes were able to lift the girder and place it on the concrete bridge piers, while the second girder remained on the staging cans. It was now time to move the second girder into position. To accomplish this, a steel crossbeam was attached under the girder on the south end. The crossbeam had been prefabricated with Hillman rollers attached on the outer portions of the beam with a pivoting bracket. The rollers would serve as the end supports as the girder was skated southward on top of the girder that had just been put into position. The bracket also had guides to ensure that the rollers remained centered on the top flange of the first girder. Furthermore, these guides had to adjust for the varying flange width. After installing the skate system on the girder, the 10-line Goldhofer platform trailer was positioned under the midpoint of the second bridge girder section and would again be used as the transport instrument to launch the section over the canyon on top of the first section. After securing the second girder, the platform trailer was then elevated until the girder was off the staging stands. The 216-foot girder was now moved toward the canyon. Upon positioning the first 75 feet of the second girder over the canyon, the front of the platform trailer was lowered and the rear portion of the trailer was elevated. This allowed the front skate system to make contact with the top of the first two girders. As the platform trailer moved toward the edge of the ravine, staging stands were placed under the rear portion of the girder. The platform trailer was then lowered until the skates were in full contact with the top of the first girder and the rear portion was resting on the staging stands. Emmert was then able to reposition the trailer at the end of the girder. The platform trailer was once again raised until the beam was fully supported by the skate system and the deck of the trailer. The trailer was winched forward as the skates continued to roll along the top of the first girder. This process continued until the end of the second girder had also reached the crane at the far end of the canyon. After the platform trailer maneuvered the component to the edge of the ravine, the crane on the south side, as well as the crane on the north side, were now able to lift the girder off of the platform trailer and the roller crossbeam in the same fashion as the first girder. Both cranes then maneuvered the girder into position next to the first set of girders and lowered it onto the foundation pier pads. Using this technique, Emmert was able to minimize the crane size and utilization, which accelerated the schedule by setting two bridge girders at one time. In addition, the remaining components for the bridge could now be installed with ease. Emmert International was once again able to minimize the project cost through its innovative approach and creative use of equipment. Loss prevention. No accidents. No incidents. No injuries. No loss of time, no property damage, no equipment damage. Safety considerations. Work performed in accordance with site management safety rules. Work performed under Emmert International safety policies for dollies, trailers, and rollers. Rigging and girder launch steps reviewed by a task force involving state and county highway representatives, customer engineer, project managers, site engineers, and Emmert Engineering utilization of radios, laser leveling techniques, and chain of command protocol to coordinate cranes and movement. 
100% compliance with all fall arrest, operating equipment, and personnel protective equipment. All work performed to the stringent safety standards of ABC, AGC, OSHA, and Emert safety guidelines. Innovation and ingenuity. Transport of girders as shop assembled units to reduce field steel prep time and number of trips. Design of launch transport system to allow turning the girders to stay within project boundary confines. Use of barge ramps to distribute soil pressure and resulting shoring wall lateral earth loads. Design of a roller and guide system to accommodate varying girder flange widths. Utilization of rollers for second girder transport over first girder assembly. Site characteristics. Weather conditions varied from sunny to heavy rain during the launch. Transport required movement up a 1% grade. Project boundaries and adjacent properties required coordinated turning of the girders 31 degrees. The canyon to be spanned was 216 feet from abutment to abutment and no equipment was allowed in environmentally sensitive areas of the ravine. Completion schedule. Completed on time and under budget. Execution, 450 man hours. Engineering and planning, 80 hours of engineering, 225 hours of planning and coordination meetings. Physical characteristics, length 432 feet combined, width 16 feet, height 9 feet, steel structure, twin cross braced welded steel plate girders, gross weight 621,000 pounds. Maximum unsupported girder cantilever length, 183 feet. Limitations. Restricted work area within project boundaries. No equipment or support structures allowed in the ravine for environmental considerations. All girder launch steps had to be completed during daylight hours within a three-day period. Contract type. Firm fixed, lump sum price.